And what I'd like you to do, underneath this heading, is I'd like you to write the numbers 1 to 25. Just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way to 25. Just write them out on your page. Don't, um, don't do them in multiple columns, because we're going to be doing some things on the right-hand side here that you want to have some space for. Okay, so just 1, 2, write them all the way okay. down. Now, I'm convinced these numbers you are very familiar with. Right? These are simple objects, and because they're small numbers, you have probably written each of one of these numbers hundreds, maybe thousands of times throughout your lifetime already. You're familiar with these numbers, okay? But I'd like to convince you there's something deep going on here that maybe you've never noticed before. Like the fish, I want you to stare at it, I want you to look again, okay? Factors are what I'm interested in today, right? Factorizing is something you learn to do very, very early on, maybe all the way up to year seven, okay? So here's how I'd like you to begin. I would like you to write out all of the factors of all of these numbers, right? All the factors of all these numbers. It starts off pretty easy, right? One, its only factor is one, no big deal. Two, what are its factors? One and two. Three, one and three. Four, what are the factors of four? One and two and four, okay. I'm listing them out, right? You don't have to list them in ascending order. As you go to these other ones, it might start to get a bit harder, but you can list them out, right? I want you to list all the factors. You might think this is a bit of a pedestrian task to do. All I would plead with you to do is to look again. Write the factors down and tell me if there's anything you notice, anything you see that piques your interest, okay? Off you go, give you some time. Um, who feels like they've noticed something, anything? Yeah, something. All right, William, give me something. start with one. All right, thank you. Now, can I just say, right, you never, never, ever take something for granted, right? And sometimes the most obvious <coughs> things will yield us insight. I totally agree. One is a factor of everything, right? Fair enough. Thank you for noticing that. Someone give me something else. Yes? Every other number has two as a factor. Every, wait, say that again. Every other number, starting from like so after one, one, one after one, every other number. So starting from yeah, do you know what I mean? I don't know. Every, every, I think you said every other number has two as a factor, but I don't think that's what you meant. Because for example, three does not have two as, in, as a factor. Every other number from two has a factor. Of every other like every other number. Or every every alternate yeah. number. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Okay. So, and that's why, right? Okay, good. So every alternate number has a factor of two, and that's why we give them a name. Right, we call them the even numbers because, like, okay, here's a characteristic, here's a pattern I can notice. Dylan, give me something else. I was gonna say that, yeah, it's just um, it goes like even or odd, even, odd, even, odd. Yeah, yeah, good. So again, by the way, the 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 characteristic of oddness or evenness is something that we have applied because it's a structure we can see, right? It's a structure we can see, so we apply that language. Um, for every even number, if you double the second last factor, you get the last factor. Okay, let's have a look at this. For every even number, if you double the second last factor, so let's have a look here and here, for instance. So you're talking about the second biggest factor, right? So the second biggest factor is always half of the actual number itself. Is that right? What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah? It's the same with like one and two. Why would that be? Why would that be? That for example, after I hit nine, for instance, I can't possibly have a bigger factor than that. Yeah. Because the second smallest factor is going to be 2. Yep. So if you divide the number by 2 and you get. The very good, very good. So 2, apart from 1, which doesn't really do anything, 2 is the smallest number you can divide anything by. We're just talking about integers, right? Um, so therefore, because you can't divide by anything smaller than that, the other factor can never be bigger than this guy, right? Good. Insight. Okay. Someone give me something else. So we have something else, we just don't know how to say it. Hmm. Okay, well, why don't you think about it for a little bit? Because, do you notice, by, by the way, articulating something is often the hardest part of, you find something you're like, but how do I, do I have the language to do this, right? And it's okay, but give us something and maybe as a class we can work something out, right? Do you want to think about it a bit longer? Or try and chuck an idea at it. All right, Jake, off you go. Um, I think for every um, second last fact of the even number is going on by once. Okay, yeah. Yeah, look, we've got, here's an even number two. And then three, and then four, five, six, seven. Yeah. And the last factor is going up by two, so every even number. Yeah, it's doubling every time, isn't it? Okay, so again, we're getting at there's something deep and sort of, what should I say, almost harmonic about what's going on. It's like music, 
that there's this regular kind of beat to this thing. Okay, someone give me something else. Did anyone do anything with like, did you notice some numbers have more factors than others? Did you yeah. notice that? Yeah. Right. Now, we've already noticed, apart from one, what's the minimum number of factors you can have? Two. The minimum number is two, right? The, the smallest number of factors you can have is two, right? Which numbers have two factors? Prime numbers. Ah, prime numbers, right? Now, by the way, that is how we define them, right? You can see in this list, one is clearly special on his own, right? He's his own man. But everything else, it's like, okay, you got two factors, that's two. You got two factors here and two factors here. In fact, you might like to, because these guys are very important, you might like to do as I'm doing and highlight these numbers which have just two factors. You might like to highlight the primes. How many primes do I have in the list? How many primes do I have? Two, four, six, eight. I have nine primes. Nine primes. <coughs> All right. I've noticed that. That the minimum number of factors is, is two if you exclude one because he seems to be a sort of special case. Have you noticed anything else? <coughs> have you noticed anything else? Or do I need to ask you to look again? Has anyone noticed anything else about? Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, before I go. Like, um, the space between them is like one and then three and then one and then three. Huh. It's kind of weird, isn't it? Let's have a look at these. Um, what what you're, you're referring to, right, is the gaps between the primes. The gaps between the primes. So this gap here, uh, you're talking about how many numbers are there in between, right? So there's a gap of one here, right? Uh, there's another gap of one here. Then there's a gap of three. Gap of one. From here to here, there's a gap of three. Gap of one, gap of three. What would the next prime be? 24, 25, 26, 27, 29. It'll be 29, won't it? How many is that to the next prime? Five. Five numbers in between, right? Okay. What do you notice about the gaps between the primes? They are all prime numbers. As in, like the gaps between them. The odd oh, numbers. Oh, right. They're They're right. Odd All of the gaps between the primes are odd. They, they, they do change, don't they? And by the way, just as a bit of a spoiler, as you go further, the gaps increase in size. Right? And as far as we can tell, we don't actually know the answer to this, but um, as far as we can tell, the, this gap will increase forever the further you go. Okay? But the gaps are all odd. Why are the gaps all odd? Why can't there ever be two numbers in between two different primes? If it's if it's if the gap is even, then it has to be an even number that is there. So then it will have a factor of two. Okay. All right. Did you catch that? By the way, simple thing, but just by looking, let me try and explain this maybe another way. Um, when we said there's a gap of one, gap of one, gap of three. Okay. Another way of saying that is to go from this number to its next prime. I have to add two. Do you agree with that? Like it's a gap of one number means. It's plus two to get to the next one, and then plus two, and then plus four, and then plus two, etc. Okay. Now, if, for instance, we thought maybe the gap was an even number, that would mean you'd have to add an odd number, right? Now, I don't care what numbers you begin with. If you start with a number x, you add an odd number, and you get number y. One of these numbers has to be even, right? At least one of them. For example, if you start with three and you add an odd number, you get six. So this one's even. If you start at 2, you'll end up at 5, but that means this one's even, right? So the gaps always have to be like this, otherwise you'll land on an even number, okay? Excellent. We're starting to get somewhere, do you see? It's like, they're just so simple, but if you dig, you find things. I still have a couple up my sleeve. Has anyone else noticed anything else? Let me push on this idea that we mentioned before. Uh, numbers, right? Uh, if they have only two factors, that's the smallest number of factors you can have apart from one. They all have two factors, right? How many factors do the rest of the numbers have? And are there any patterns there? For instance, how many factors here? Three. Three factors. How many factors here? Four. How many factors? Four. How many? Whoops, sorry, I missed one. How many? Three. 
You keep going. Keep going. So Tell me if you notice something. All the squares on this have one less. Ooh, you well, I'd like you to finish this pattern. You finish this pattern and see if you can notice something. Give some time.